أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله يستعينه واستغفره وأستهديه وأؤمن به ولا أقفره وأؤذي من يقفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan he rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillah once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out in this blessed month of Ramadan and offering our Juma Salah. Praise be to Allah who create for you all things that are on earth, who knows the secrets of the heavens and the earth and knows what you reveal and what you conceal. He is the master of the day of judgment when one soul shall not avail another nor shall intercession be accepted for her, nor shall anyone be helped from outside. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who chooses his special mercy for whom he wills, for he is the Lord of grace abounding. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Besides him we have neither patron nor helper. To him belongs the east and the west, and everything renders worship to him. He has chosen the faith for you. Then die not except in the faith of Islam. I bear witness that Muhammad upon whom we peace is his servant and messenger, the leader of guidance and the chosen messenger to conclude the divine message to mankind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow his blessings on his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family, his companions and his followers. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, for today's goodbye I have chosen a very simple topic and that is the blessings of Ramadan. We are now in the midst of a matchless month. It is a great and noble month with numerous merits and virtues. It is a session rich with gains for those who partake in good deeds as it destroys those who transgress and commit sins in it. It is a month that excels other months by a night that is better than a thousand months. Blessed be the one who sincerely fasts in this month, invokes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and evening, and wake up during the nights of the months praying and devoting his life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, the first half of Ramadan is now gone. Try then to make good use of the remaining half before the month ends. Hasten to do or hasten to use the remaining days in thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings and try harder to do righteous deeds and repent to him. For the hours of the month are hurriedly coming to an end. Do good deeds during the remaining days and we will be forgiven of the evils we did before. But if we persist in these evil deeds, we will be punished for the past sins and the latter ones. 
Whoever holds fast unto the rope of Allah and makes good use of his time will be victorious and free from all evils. And the miser and the unfortunate is the one who sins during these remaining blessed days, for his lot will certainly be ignominy, distress and regret, and woe accursed will be on a day that the neg negligent people will shed bitter tears. A day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O oh my slaves, these are only your deeds which I enumerate for you and upon which I will reward you. So whosoever finds good reward ye from, let him thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever find otherwise, let him blame no one but himself. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves, where are some of those who witnessed the last Ramadan with us? Were they not sent to the world of the dead? Have they not become inhabitants of the graveyards? Also, where are some of those who started the fasting of this present Ramadan with us? Have they definitely been overtaken by debt and removed from their decorated and luxurious mansions to the depths of the graves? We shall certainly join them sooner or later. Let us therefore get prepared for that very day. Let us remember the bitterness of death for which no human being is exempted. Either even the leader of mankind, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, A'udhu billahi mina shaytanir rajim Wa ma ja'alna li basharim min qablikal kulud Kulud the meaning of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we grant not to any human being immortality before you. O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then if you die, would they live forever? Everyone is going to taste death, and we shall make a trial for you, with evil and with good, and to us you will be returned. Chapter Oh, this ayah is 34 and 35 taken from Surah Al-Anbiya. My dear brothers and sisters, who is he that was able to escape from death? Who is he that fortified himself in his fortress and was not brought out by death? Who is he that endeavored to attain all his wishes and achieve that? Who is he that yearned for long life and was not stopped from attaining that? Which sweet life did death not turn a bitter one? And which branch stood erect and death did not have it broken? Death has taken fathers and rendered women widows and children orphans. You should be, right, you should be remembered or reminded that nothing can protect you from death. So repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before your death comes. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again, A'uzu billahi mina shaytanir rajim Kul innal mawta alladhi tafiruna minhu fa innahu The meaning of which? Verily, the death from which you flee will surely meet you. Surah al Juma, Ayah 8. My dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan days are the cream of holy days. He who, bless, who, he who is blessed in these days is indeed fortunate. 
and one who and one and who is deprived of these blessings is indeed the unfortunate one. He who does not work for his final abode in these days has wronged himself and will be blameworthy. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day ascended the pulpit and said, Amin, Amin, Amin. He was asked, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you ascended the pulpit and said, Amin, Amin, Amin. He answered, it was Jibreel alayhi salam who came to me and said, whoever lived to witness Ramadan and yet was not forgiven his sins and as a result entered hell, may Allah keep him away from his mercy. Say, Amin. And I said, Amin. My dear brothers and sisters, the one who are negligent in good deeds in this Ramadan are not sure to live to witness the next Ramadan. Give this month therefore its due and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public and private. Remember that we have two angels with us who record all our deeds and do not disgrace ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whom nothing of our secret is hidden. Brothers and sisters, the days of Ramadan ought to be honored. Do we guard ourselves from idle talks and immoral looks? Do we prevent our limbs from pastime and wild deeds? Have we prepared provisions that are suitable for our journey to the hereafter? Or are we among those who engage in deeds which displease Almighty Allah and wander in this world as if we are created for nothing but the enjoyment of this life. Be aware, least the harmful things will be dearer to us. In this month, guard our eyes, tongues, and the rest of our limbs from sins, though it is incumbent on us to do that, in, that at all times, it becomes more binding during the month of Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever does not refrain from false sayings and deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need of his abstention from food and drink. And it is reported that Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari radiallahu an said, When you fast, let your ears and tongue also fast by keeping away from lying and forbidden things. Do not harm your neighbors. Let tranquility and peace be your habit. And let there be difference between your fasting and the non-fasting days. My dear brothers and sisters, why are people hastening to do good deeds and we are still there sitting down? Why are they observing the night prayer and we are there sleeping? Why is it that when the faithful slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are seen standing in prayer, we are not seen with them? Why is it that when righteous people are mentioned, we are not mentioned among them? We are hoping for salvation with insignificant deeds, with no prayer, no repentance, and no sincere attitude. Brothers and sisters, Righteous people used to spend their Ramadan nights in sleeplessness for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has separated between them and their beds. They would weep out of fear of Almighty Allah. Their hearts were tender and they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of the night while others are fast asleep. As for us who spend our nights in sin and waste our Ramadan nights in forbidden and destructive deeds, it is not enough a great loss for us that we see the faithful and repentant people spending their nights hours in seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begging for his pleasure. My dear brothers and sisters, 
Let us try to rectify our past mistakes and shun our past time. Join the righteous people in their acts of worship and fill our lives with obedience to, our, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Endeavor to perform the congregational night prayer for the remaining part of the month. For the Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, Whoever performs the congregational night prayer during Ramadan with faith and in sincerity, his past sins will be forgiven. My dear brothers and sisters, the blessed month of Ramadan is a month of reflection over the glorious Quran. It is an opportunity for perfecting its recitation and reviving what has been memorized of it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Always review what you have memorized of the Quran, for it escapes from people's heart faster than the cattle when it escapes with its tying rope. He also said, The example of one who memorizes the Quran is like that of a tied camel. If it is constantly checked and retied, it will remain. But if it is left, it will escape. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us with, his no, with this noble book, Al-Quran. Reflect over its verses, follow its injunctions, and do not rush its reading. Iman told Abdullah bin Masur radiallahu an that he recited the Mufassal surah starting from Surah Kaf to the end of the Quran in a single rakah. Ibn Masur radiallahu an told the man, Rushing is like the poem. There are some people who recite the Quran and it does not exceed their color bones. But when it penetrates the heart, and becomes firmly established therein, it benefits. My dear brothers and sisters, the righteous, our righteous predecessors used to recite the whole Quran many times. And when Ramadan came, they would recite more. Angel Jibreel used to meet the Prophet every night during the month of Ramadan and study the Quran with him. But during his final year in the earth, he reviewed the Quran with him twice. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, let us take stocks of our lives. For we don't know if we will live or if we will ever live to see another Ramadan. Our time, our time is very precious. Now it is the only time we own. So we give, love, and toil with a will. We place no faith in tomorrow, for the clock may then be still. We think and we behave our best today. Today is sure preparation for tomorrow, and all the tomorrows to follow. A Muslim does not just kill time. A Muslim fills the time with the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we prepare for that, we will be happy when that arrives. If we do not prepare for that, we will regret when that arrives. And just a reminder for us, my dear brothers and sisters, the fathers, the husband should remember that he is the imam of the house. As a result, he is responsible for not only the well-being of his family, but the direction in which it is heading. He will one day, inshallah, have to give an account, not only of himself, but will appear with his family to give account for his destiny. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, let us all take a lesson from this. Let us all reflect on our past and think of our future 
and prepare for that day. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin. Our Lord, we have wronged our own souls. If you forgive us not and bestow not upon us your mercy, we shall certainly be lost. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafana wa iyyakum bi ayat al-zikr al-Hakim innahu ta'ala jawarun karim maliku barru furahi Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah na madahu wa nasta'inahu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يرلله فلا هادي الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإيسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفغشاء والمنكر والبق يا إيزوكم لألكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى أولى وأولى وأأز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر